Well, this morning, Aaron is here today because he has said, you're a good, good father. Aaron, why don't you come on, come on up? Uh, this is my buddy. Uh, I've known Aaron for a long time. I got to be Aaron's college pastor at Hoffmantown Church. And, you know, Aaron really grew up in the church. His parents loved him, taught him about Jesus. But it wasn't until this year that he went through the fire. He really went through a difficult time, the loss of a relationship and a divorce and anger began to consume him. And it wasn't until this year that he realized that he had never asked Jesus to be his personal Lord and Savior and sought out forgiveness from God and to be set free from that kind of anger. Now, Aaron's quieter. This is as loud as he gets. <laughs> But I have seen a transformation happen. He will chase my little girls around in the gym. They will giggle and laugh. They want to sit on his lap at lunch. He serves like nobody else. Nobody else. I mean, he's here all day, every Sunday, doing whatever is needed. He's improved our setup time to get our band here early by like 20 minutes because of how efficient he is. Guys like me just talk, and we don't do any work, so we're thankful for guys like you, Aaron. But Aaron, why don't you come on up? Aaron is here today to publicly tell the whole world that he is a follower of Jesus Christ. And I am very proud of you, Aaron, and I'm excited for you. And is it true that you've accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. Because of that, I baptize you, my brother and my friend, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. a sinner. I'm here today to follow Christ. I'm grateful that he did die on the cross and gave me this opportunity. Um, I do have a lot of friends, uh, family members, several people here today have helped me down that path, so I want to say thank you for that, especially my wife, Melissa, who's been a big supporter of me, so that's why I'm here. It's awesome, man. Well, uh, Adam... He knows more people than I do. I don't know how that's possible. I have over 2,000 Facebook friends. It's all just because I went to high school with every single one of them here in town. Stay in a place long enough, you get to know everybody. He's only been here a couple years. And so my hope is that uh, God will use you, your story, and your life to impact all those people that you know. And if there are people who don't know Jesus, that uh, this moment right here can draw them to him and have faith in Christ. And so Adam, why don't you come on in here. Baptism is as amazing visual. How's the water, buddy? Oh, it's really warm. It's okay, nice. good. <laughs> we put a lot of ice in here uh, because the cold water broke this morning. So uh, it was smoking hot a minute ago. <laughs> but <laughs> the power of a person's life getting in front of people I think speaks more volume than any sermon. Because what you're doing right now is you are a live action sermon. You're telling this world that this works, that God is real, and he has really changed me and transformed me. And I've seen that in your life. I've seen the passion that you have for God to love your family and to reach out to all your friends. It's incredible. And so this is a visual, it's a picture. I wear a wedding ring. Um, I barely got that off. Ooh, that was good. Uh, I wear a wedding ring to tell the whole world that I belong to my smoking hot wife, Tasha, right? I am hers and she is mine. When people see me with my ring on, they know I'm married. It tells them something. If I take the ring off, I'm still married, you know, but I'm just a creepy dude now, right? <laughs> I'm not telling the world that I'm married. When you get baptized, you are putting on a symbol. It's like wearing a cross. It's an external act about something that's happened on the inside. That God has saved you and transformed you. And it's your way of going public and saying, I love Jesus and I'm not ashamed. And so, Adam, is that true that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Well, because of that, my brother, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Zebra towel. <laughs> yeah.
Now, we've yet to see this happen, and there's no pressure, but maybe you know the gospel well enough. You know that you're a follower of Jesus. You've just never been baptized, and now could be an opportunity for you to come up here and uh, to join in Adam and tell the world that you're a follower of Jesus. If that's you, feel free to make your way up here. We won't drag that out at all, so you've got about one and a half seconds to get up and go crazy for Jesus. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for every person in this room, Lord, that came to celebrate and watch Adam get baptized. Lord, to support him on his new journey and his relationship with Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would bless him and give him favor. And God, that you would do some monumental things through his life. And Lord, we also know that there's going to be times of hurt and struggle and suffering. And in those moments, remind Adam and his family that you love them and that you are real and that you are better than. You're better than comfort. You're better than our happiness. And so thank you, God, that you fulfill us and you provide for us a greater comfort and a greater happiness than we could on our very own. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming. Don't forget, one service, 1030 next week, Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving. And also, on December 13th, Tom Doyle, the literal Middle Eastern expert on Islam will be coming to our church to speak at our church as our guest. Thanks to Andy and Nancy and Tim Hennig, who are friends with them. And so Tom Doyle will be here. He's a great author, and we want to get the word out. Invite lots of friends. Let's pack this place out on December 13th. You guys have an amazing week. We'll see you next week. Thank you for coming.